Welcome everyone to this special colloquium by Ngo Bao Cho uh, from the University of, uh, of Chicago. Uh, Professor Ngo is also a visiting chair at the Collège de France in Paris, as well as the uh, director of the uh, Institute for Advanced Studies in Mathematics in Hanoi, Vietnam, where he's originally from. And we are very honored. He's also a uh, chair uh, co-chair with uh, Nigel Hitching of the Hitching and Go Lab here at ICMAT. And um, um, uh, his contributions are uh, well known to most people here. For those less familiar, let me just say that his uh, proof of the fundamental lemma was a, a breakthrough in the Langlands theory and won him a, a Fields Medal in the 2010. Uh, and uh, so we are very happy that uh, he has been uh, here for almost 10 days now and uh, in the future. So his talk today is on the functional equations satisfied by automorphic L functions. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation and for the invitation to, to Madrid. I, my great pleasure to, to come back to Madrid after quite many years. Um, so um, in this talk, I, um, um, I'm not talking about fundamental lemma, the Hitchin vibration, but I think very much in the automorphic forms. So uh, one very, very basic and possibly one of the most fundamental problems in the automorphic forms. Uh, I think out by Robert Lenland, the conjecture of Robert Lenland in the 70s, it is very foundational papers, these topics, some problem automorphic form, very, very modest title, but it, it incredible papers. So in, in, in these papers, he, um, you know, he formulated a series of conjectures connected to one, of, one to another. And one of them is on the functional equation that supposed to be satisfied with Pascal function, they don't know yet. So maybe my title is a little bit misleading on that. Um, because it's a colloquium talk, I, uh, I, you know, I want to um, put uh, these kind of ideas in historical perspective. And I thought I would go back very far away in history and uh, apologize if you know, some of you might know on this very well. Uh, all right, so let me start this. So I start with the Riemann zeta function, right? Uh, all know you have this Riemann zeta function is defined by this if it's series. Uh, with, with a, a compass parameter S. Right? And uh, uh, the, the fundamental observation is that this also has all the product. And, uh, this is uh, the, the infinite product on prime numbers. And, uh, and this is just a complete analytic expression of the fundamentals and arithmetic that every natural integers have unique uh, factorization as part of prime numbers. The, here's the only problem is that it's not, uh, it's not always convergent. It, it is absolute convergent if the real property of S is greater than one. So this makes sense. This, this is uh, uh, you know, the, the solid equalities for the when S, uh, uh, when the complex number S lies on the half plane, the real property of S greater than one, right? And uh, one of the, after this series, uh, this is a Riemann zeta function, uh, you know, but it actually was on the first line was known to Euler. And uh, one of the, the, the great contribution of Riemann is, you know, it's better instead of thinking about S as the real numbers, best thing about the complex numbers. And as complex numbers, it makes sense to talk about analytic continuation. And that's what Riemann proved in his, you know, the absolute fundamental papers that. This function have analytic continuation with simple component as well to one. And it satisfies a functional equation. It's a very simple one. Um, zeta of s plus zeta one minus no, it, no, c of s, but c of one minus s, it's this, you know, this flip, s one minus s. Uh, if you, you know, we, we have to, you know, multiply zeta by this, you know, this kind of factors. Okay? Uh, for the quite mysterious factor, this gamma function is something. And I cannot really remember this. I need to look at Wikipedia too. <laughs> Everything is. But it's on the, uh, one of the things that we try to understand how this thing appears right, uh, naturally. Uh, 
So uh, that comes from, actually, that is the, the, the contribution of, of John Tate in his thesis. And this is a really um, uh, a milestone in the football number theories, uh, where he, he developed a, a full scale theory of human zeta functions uh, based on Fourier analy analysis on the adepts. And, and all these factors appear naturally, including these bizarre factors at infinity. So let's uh, review and go to present and review take care of this. So the local factor of the Riemann zeta function at p is this thing one minus p to the minus f minus one. Of course, we have to develop so a series uh, p to the minus n s, and you can very easily see that it actually can can be seen as the integrals instead of the series. You can see it's integrals. So we integral over q p star. Of the function, the context on ZP, right, against the characters, the x, absolute value of x to the s. So this is a very important formula. I mean, it's, it's, on, it's, it's kind of immediate, but it's important. Many features are important. First, integrate over QP star, so the, the, the multiplicative group of QP. And, and this is a lot of locally compact groups. And so the measure we choose is going to be invariant measure, this, uh, this star x. Invariant measure on QP star. So it has to be normalized by this thing, for example, volume of zero. This maximum compact is one. But the function, the test function, is not a, you know, this, this look like compact, but it's not compact support. You know, the ZP, when you, you intersect with QP star, is not compact. So this integral is not convergent per se. But it's convergent if you, uh, you know, we go into have some, you know, some kind of infinite support when X goes to zero. But then no support becomes zero when x goes to infinity. Right? So that's why when s is greater than zero, uh, this this thing this thing is going to be uh, you know 10 to zero when you go to x zero. So that makes this conduction. So anyway, you have this this thing. This is little you know, this this series, and this series converts if you assume that your property of s greater than, than zero. So that gives you an interpretation of these factors as an integral. So that is the first point. And it just happened that you know you can you, you can these Achimian factors can be uh, defined in exactly the same way. It just want to replace, so you have to integrate over R star or R star plus. You know, here is a okay. either you put a one half or not. I, I don't remember if you know they sent one half it because of R star or R star plus. And instead of the, of the test, this is common test function. Instead of this function. You replace the Gaussian function, you know, exponential minus x squared to the, divided by two. And if you compute it, and you have good chance to find this, you know, up to some one half. I haven't checked this, but I checked it many times in my life, but you know, this kind of thing you cannot even remember. So, okay, so it, it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, so, in general, uh, so this is uh, called the bit integrals, is to, um, we start with some local fins. Right? Local fin is either QP or real number. So it's a, a completion of R or completion of some number of fins. And um, the main book is locally compact fins. So they have local compact. So uh, you know, uh, it makes sense to an F star uh, is also locally compact groups. So it makes sense to, 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 uh, to, to consider the invariant measure, the star X. And what you do here is the phi, which replaces a one ZP or the Gaussian function, is can be now any test functions, any member of the Schwartz space, any Schwartz functions on F. And uh, this the Schwartz function on F is an F is um, uh, non Achimian phi is very simple. This is a locally constant function with compact supports on F. And when you have uh, real numbers, it's going to be a function with a rapid degree. The rapid decrease, rapid decay, and as well as all these derivatives. Uh, and um, uh, and here, chi, so instead of this x to the uh, absolute value of x to the s, you can just consider any characters. So for me, character is just continuous, continuous homomorphism of f star to c star. Right? And um, you know, it takes some time, but you can actually define the real property of chi for any such character, not just for this one. And this is one, of, you know, this absolute real value of S. 
but you're gonna have to define real property for every every character. So this is theorem converge as long as the real property is greater than zero. So this is a you know, ab abstraction of this construction of state. And uh, so of course, when you specialize k to this x to the s, then you get back to the integral one we considered before. And um, also, it is not hard to, to prove that this, um, uh, this integral not to be con Oh, one thing I had to say that this, uh, uh, you know, the, um, now, uh, if you fix phi is a one ZP Gaussian function or whatever from Gauss, trust function, and you look at this uh, zeta, phi, this zeta integral as a function of chi, then, um, then it is actually a meromorphic function of variable chi to an extent. So we had to see that actually the, the, the set of characters can be given the structures of Riemann surface, actually. Right? The Riemann, you know, the, the F, F, upper, uh, F star here is to um, have a compact part. Like, you know, when F nona can be that is O star, and the discrete part that is the, the valuation. And when you have a character characteristic of compact part, uh, that gives you some kind of thing discrete because the function can do or not the compact group is discrete group. And the other discrete part gives you some 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 analytic structure that is system. So this this is some kind of algebraic, you know, I mean a form for 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 non I think it can be the algebraic varieties for over real numbers of the Riemann surfaces, but it, it's not compact, but uh, and also have infinite many components, as many components as the dual, as the element of the dual, function dual of the maximum compact F star, right? So most of the times it want to go to one single component, but it would to think about you know, many components. Is it okay that you see that? All right, so, um, so the heat is the two thing that, you know, this people to think about this, construction of data integrals. So as I said, uh, when phi is fixed, this is a kind of middle morphic from the chi. I should have one single point on so the chi much to, to zero, basically. Uh, but on the other side, when you fix chi, when you fix chi, uh, then this this map from from phi to to data of this, you know, when it's already phi or after middle morphic continuation, whatever. This form a distribution by right, the linear form of phi. And actually, the key value distribution, because that is how you do the integrals. And very important to observe that this is the space of one, this display of chi and distribution is one dimensional. So, so, the way you can, that's very nice when you think about this is that you, uh, uh, when phi varies in this short space, the melting transforms. Mm -hmm. You form space section of some line bundles on this on this on this Riemann surface of characters, right? and this is actually the stock of that line bundle. Right? Now we see it takes some time, some analysis to justify that, but that is what you want to, to remember: the, the Merlin transform. So this is may not this is not a not holomorphic function, but it it's just a, a section of some line bundle because it's some some points. The points given by the you know, the, the, the points of the zeta integrals. I think the point is bounded. Okay. All right, so that now, now is really the most important thing is uh, in this is, is this gamma factors. And that is very important in this business because the, the contribution of, I mean, the main insight that there is is that, uh, uh, you know, there is this, Global functional equation, but there's a local functional equation. So global the local uh, local counterpart, and the local counterpart is the same as the existence of the gamma factors. So look at this. So you, you start with some some function test function phi. You do this zeta phi key, right? As soon as this is modified, avoid the points. And also you can do instead of this, you can do the phi hat, which the fully transform of phi hat, and you value that some you know this. This chi of the same you know, by the flip from chi to chi minus one, and there is one uh, one shift by the by the absolute values, right. and it and then this is actually the claim that this the ratio here is 
it's just it's something independent that's function. So why is that? Because when you see that, you know, when you just divide, they are they are two vectors, you know, of the same one dimensional vector space. So this is both numerator and denominator define a linear form, the Kaibara linear forms, and this space is one dimensional. So of course, it's, the, the ratio is a, a numbers which independent of the, of the test functions. And when chi varies, this define mirror morphic function. Another way you said to say that is, you know, the most uh, numerator and denominators is um, uh, is the uh, you know the uh, this is the um, this is a million transform of phi as from the guy and the such of this light bundle, right? And doing phi for such transform and of and, and phi the you know to do this evolution on this on on chi, even another section of this light bundle. And of course, the ratio of two section level is meromorphic function, and that is a that is this gamma. Okay. All right, and so so this is why you really want short space, right? Because the, the main thing about short space just because it has, it's stable and the Fourier transform. So that is, and uh, and uh, the gamma factor is just the, the effect of the Fourier transform on the main So. Uh, so that is how how you know the how you know, they understood this story anyway. So you see, uh, you know, this is when you apply of F Q B, you know, why not just take field equal to one ZP, right? You take anything, but one ZP and then you get this because as you compute the, the, the numerator is this, right? Is the, the is the P local factors of the function and the denominators is the P factors of the of the functional equation of the, of the field. And so this is the gamma. So again, um, here numerator the denominator somehow depend on the fee, but the ratio doesn't. Right? The ratio is something that is that is why. <coughs> uh, and also you, you can um, there's another way to um, define this gamma not as abstractly as it's you no know, ratio to or such the lab bundles or to vectors in one dimension vector space, but you can define the integrals. So why is it that? Because the uh, uh, because when you remember when you define Fourier transforms, you know, the uh, I haven't read the formula here, but the phi hat is going to be integral over f of phi x psi x y dx, right? And that thing can be turned into a convolution on f star. F star. That you think to, 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 to observe. Right? Uh, so the you know the, the formula defining Fourier transform can be turned into convolution product. You just had to uh, to remember to remember that the dx on f had to be turned to dx mod x, right? Because that is the multiplicative measures. And that mod x is the responsible this guy one, right? Because this guy one is really the responsible on it, it, is present because there's a difference between the, you know, the additive hard measure and multiple hard measure. So there's a difference that is this guy one. And, and then the, and, uh, if you do the convolution, and then the million transform with multiplication. Right? So this number of factors, it's by, by abstract uh, Fourier analytic, it's, it's just the, somehow the million transform of this exponential side, side exponential. Well, I may here I maybe have missed some absolute values again, but it is. And also, it, it is also a little bit to make this thing convergent in the regular rising right, take but... All right. And then, of course, now the functional equation can be formulated in this very nice way, which is you know, every, every place you have a gamma factors, and you want that this thing is product one to one. So, this is actually very nice what you remember about the functional equation. Except this is not quite correct. Because this thing actually it looked very nice, but I don't know how to. I mean, I think there's no, I mean, I don't know personally, but I asked people and nobody did really know how to define it. But this is this thing that is not converging anywhere. So there's no way to do to I don't know how to regularize this, but it's just a nice way to remember this. But what makes sense is this 
an entity. So we can see this as some kind of uh, million transforms, you know, million mirror of this, of this uh, partial summation formula. And you have phi and phi hat. But phi is now um, a Schwarz function on the addends, and phi hat is the Fourier transform the addends, and then you have this partial summation formula. So every time you have a discrete group, discrete group compact group on the on the abelian uh, local compact group, and then you have this abstract possible summation formula, but it's formula is extremely somehow the, the, the mother of the analytic number theory. So in this context, is the kind of equivalent to the partial equation. <coughs> All right. So let me now try to summarize that this is some kind of very, you know, kind of programmatic, so that we have, uh, you know, a, a blueprint uh, to try some generalization. So of course, locally, you have this Schwarz phase, okay, the Schwarz function, and it's very important to remember, actually, it, it, it's not just a space, but it's given with some, some distinguished vector. For, for QP, you have this one ZP, and for, for SR, we have this Gaussian function. Is stable by Fourier transforms. And um, so the short space over the advance is going to be um, the function of this form. It's my definition. I mean, there's a more abstract definition, but, we, but this is, uh, uh, you know, a practical definition is the, on the function define a tensor product. So, the, so at, at the S here is some kind of finite set of primes, and then you can, you can choose this phi P of phi TP arbitrary any Schwarz function, but for the remaining place, you got to choose the basic function. Right? But without the basic function, you can't even not you cannot even define the Schwarz variable at that. So on this package, you need the Schwarz space locally on and also the the, the, the basic function. And have the Fourier transform on SQP and the on SA, right? Because the if the Fourier transform preserves this uh, this basic function. And then a possible summation from so that is kind of the Fourier analytic package that you want on, on the addends. And then if you apply the medium transform in some skinful way, and then get whatever you want on the on the data function. Right. So now we want to generalize this. So this is the uh, this is the, the big step forward is the uh Generalization. Of course, before that, there's many work like Hecker work, um, modular form, and many, many other many other circumstances where where you can prove the partial equation of L function, which look very much like that function. But then Lance come up with a very general formalism that I um, try to present it very succinctly and in simplification. So let G be a reductive group of a number of fields. And then for simplicity, as soon as split, and it's split, it, it, it's really to make my notation you know, more, uh, more agreeable. And so uh, the addends is the ring containing K, so th this is G, G of A is group under the point of G. So this organ is locally compact group. And now I'm not going to uh, uh, define what automorphic is. Uh, from uh, representation now, but they are uh, representation of this group essentially, but this is group G of A, irreducible representation, and um, that all go into some functional space, the function of the other of G A mod G Q. And because it is irreducible, then all these local factors are irreducible and admissible representation of, of G of KV. But KV is the competition of this number of feet of some. That's right. And um, and also we know that pi v is for every pi, pi the automorph automorphicities imply that pi v is unramified for, on, for for almost on on v. So unramified it takes some you know uh, uh, I don't want to explain what unramified means, but it's thing that you can really very really easily classify by by means of this Clement dual group. So Langland introduced this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, dual group that appears in many part, other part of mathematics, uh, and usually it appears also to classify the representation of G. It creates a finite group by what stick. It appears in in geometries, in math physics, and so on. 
but here it appears you know, the, as long as G is speed, you can just take the root system of G and exchange root and core roots, and then build up you know reductive over complex numbers. And we know that you know here there's some kind of very basic um, element is uh, due to Satake or Satake isomorphism that you can imply that the well, the unramified representation of G of KV, where KV is local, no not immediate fit, a class where exactly by semi simple conjugacy class of G hat. So for AD pi V, you can give them by sigma. So when you have automorphic representation, so there is some kind of very complicated finite many plays where it's ramified. Uh, at this point, you don't know what to do with them. But for all the remaining plays, is you, know, you have similar classification. So each, each prime numbers give give us some kind of semi simple conjugacy class in some complex reductive group. Yeah. And from that, you can you know, start building the L function. Right? How to collect on this conjugacy class with some kind of numerical waste by square. So that's what Levin set out to do. So for that, you know, you, the way you need to you get some, some numbers, the best is to choose a representation. So we choose a defined dimensional representation of this complex group, some GLF. And we define the local factors in this way. So for pi B, uh, uh, unramified representation. So it's exactly the same as the, in the Riemann data function, so that we just insert this, this conjugacy class in the, in the expression. And of course, then we have the determinant minus one. Right. All right. And then, um, and then, you know, now we know these factors for almost all the plays, just multiply all of them together. And the first conjectures. And as the Langlands prove that this is the, when you uh, when when you do the product of all of them, uh, uh, then it's a conversion on, on some half plane. Now we are talking about S greater some number n, some larger large number n, depending on the group, depending on the root system. I don't remember exactly, but it depends on the, uh, yeah. you can you can you can draw that that numbers. Uh, Easily out of the root systems that depend on pi, and uh, the first conjecture is just about of these undamified factors. Is you can you can metamorphic continue, and moreover, it's more precisely, Lenglet's conjecture that you can actually define these factors for at all place, including the ramified place and the real and the Archimedean place, so that when you insert on this definition in then you get some kind of automorph some, some equation. So relating S pi to one minus S pi, you just flip the, the row into row, into row, into the dual uh, representation. And this is the, how Langlands generalized you know, uh, the theory of Riemann zeta function, right? All right, so this is, you know, this, like, I think this Langland rule, Wrote this thing in this paper in the end of 16 and 17. And uh, it's still the kind of the, from conceptual point of view, it's still state of the art. I mean, there's, not, there's no kind of choice modern than that. Right? So, uh, um, uh, so let, let me um, explain on how this you know, thing is related to other Langlands conjectures. So, first of all, you have this. Very basic case, I mean, the important case was principal L function. So when G equals GLN, and she had here also GLN of C, right? And then you can take rho to be the identical representation. In that case, somehow there's no need to prove. Right? It's already matrix. And in this case, uh, there's a good logic. Jacques K actually can give, give a way to prove the, the functional equation in this case, in very much in the same. Same framework at eight theories to generalize this from G from, from GN1 to GNN. And uh, you know, in eight theories, there's there's the main role the group of, of GM, F star, and the and, and G and A1, the, the additive group, and F. So you know, in this case, it's very naive to just replace G GN1 by GNN and A1 by MN. 
the space of matrices and by matrix, the contingent right? And so uh, also this is a vector space, the matrix vector space, and you can take Schwarz function is the same kind of Schwarz function for non-Archimedic place for which you locally constant from the compact support. And on Archimedean place, you get this kind of graphic EK functions. <coughs> And also we have this, so this is a space, there's no doubt about short space here. And the basic function is a kind of obvious function due to the characteristic function of the integral matrices for, for non abelian space. And this basic function have these nice properties that I, I write here. It has the, the, so this is a known, again, as a function, a restrict to G of, G of KV, this is not compass support, right? This compass support as a, as a on matrix, but if, when you restrict the invertible matrix, it's not compass support. But you can try to get the trace of the representation. So if it is compass support, then the trace already well defined. But this, because not compass support, there's some kind of uh, convergence issue. But if you take with the twist by the absolute values of determinant to the S, and S of com com some complex parameters, then you get exactly this. So this is a kind of main book in the basic function from representation theoretic point of view. In that that is kind of this cut on the planified representation. And for the non unified representation, it's given exactly the, the L function that you want. Right? This basic function needs is the, uh, the right formula. And also we have the, on all the metrics, you have the Fourier transforms. Right? But you, you, you had to in with the full transform in to identify the matrix with the duals, and for that it is exponential the trace, maybe some, some linear form on invalid linear form on the matrix of the trace, and to, to form the full ecological exponential the trace. And that is how the build full theory. And so okay, so and then the, so this is the fact that is corresponding to gamma factor in this. So not just for undamified. But for every irreducible representation pi, if f is a metric coefficient, right, there's also a metric coefficient of representation. Now, now that they are all infinite But if you want to reply, you want to realize your representation in the space of function on G, then, there's, there's the, then, there's, then, then the vectors become some kind of function of metric coefficient. And the thing is that if you convolve this kind of full economy with f, then it just uh, it just uh, a scalar multiplication by the scalar in the gamma factors, which is independent of f, only dependent on pi. So that is the kind of the analog of the local functional equation. Uh, uh, it did, did this, right? Is it okay? This, this, this thing? So, so the 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 formula for um, local functional equation is a, is equivalent to this formula. The important things again is this is independent of the of the of the matrix coefficient. And of course, then the on at this point you can complete the local theory and then you apply a possible summation for this matrix. And then how how would one construct this? Because there's more I mean, you call it a linear representation, they have to deal with the deal with the you know the parabolic induction and stuff like that. But that is the representation theoretic, but uh, uh, I don't want to discuss about that. All right, so we want to, so the one of the things, uh, all these happened at the, at the same time, the Goodman Jacquet and also the Nalan conjectures came somehow about the same time, the kind of big explosion of this theory. And by this, uh, in Nalan Le had another conjecture, but from theoretic conjectures. Uh, so that means uh, if you have the repeated row of Gn to Gnn, then there's a way, a canonical way to transfer automorphic representation from G to automorphic from Gnn, and which is compatible with local factors. So, so local representation of representation of G is coefficient in some local thing of the transfer to, to Gnn, uh, and the way that is compatible with L functions. So, so because this thing, if you have, you start with something that is automorphic representation G, you can just transfer it to G and then, and then apply the Goldman-Jacquet. And then you get the, uh, uh, that, that 
apply the, the conjectures on the Alfonso equations. Um, and I want to add that in also the photo conjectures of Lemmerzy apply for two arbitrary groups. Can be G hat to, to H hat. H does need to be to be a group linear group. But of course, then the, the formulation conjecture is become more complicated because you can involve L packets in all the things. But for GNN, it's just a map. All right. Um, and somehow, uh, uh, so the automat, as I said, is the general theory of automorphic L form can be reduced to the Godman Jacke case by these authority conjectures. And conversely, you can do the opposite thing. At least when the for GN land, the transfer from G to GN land um, can be is implied by, by the functional equation. So that is the converse theorem, as it's known in, in, in for modular form, for example, the modular form by Hector, is, when you do the L function, it has a functional equation. And by Andre Bay, if, if, the, if the modular form twisted by something, on the twist have the functional equation. And the, the, and the front of this power, it might be modular form. So this is um, automorphicity is this guy kind of very um, difficult to catch. It's actually equivalent in, in, in some sense to this functional equation. This is why it is really uh, in, the, in, the, in the core of the automorphic theory. All right. All right. So the, so, you know, the, this, this functionality conjecture seem to be a little bit kind of very technical, but it is believed, I mean, Langland emphasizes a lot, it's really the kind of the core conjectures in his program, the most important conjectures in his program. In the, because on the representation theory, I mean, I don't know, I don't give the numbers, but 90% or 90 <laughs> of conjectures or problem are just on, on special kind of for political conjectures, such as derived from political conjectures. Some very uh, kind of simple principle, but it, it somehow it, it just captures on the structures of representation and of both local group and automorphic forms. All right. So that is somehow from the automorphic model, that is what you want to understand. And now the formal equation is a way to, to approach it and not the vice versa. All right, and now um, what happened is you know, in the in in about the end of you know the last century, uh, Braverman and Kastan you know uh, proposed some framework to to prove of an equation, not by functorality but just directly, some kind of very direct approach. Why don't you try to generalize that there is a Woodman jacket to any group, any role? So what is the problem? Why don't you do that instead of going through this? Uh, Authority conjectures of them, and we know it's very difficult. Right? So uh, it's, it's still kind of debatable what is easier, authority of equation, but we should try both. So now, uh, just for simplification, I want to put myself in this kind of some more special context that I, I, G is given with some kind of homomorphism to GM, it could be dominant. You can also put ourselves in that case in one chip by GN, for example. And, and as you see one that the, on the dual side, so we have GM to G hat, and when you compose it row, and then this GM to G hat is just a scalar multiplication. So that makes the formulation much, much, you know, much straightforward. So now we have to replay the metric. So I mean, in good one job, KK, they did kind of the space of metric, but you replace it something. And, uh, and and you have to think that it, it kind of kind of the first confusion it must be a Lie algebra of GNN, but it is not Lie algebra because you want that this pair of magic contain the groups, and Lie algebra doesn't contain the group. So what you want here actually some some algebraic varieties are containing G, and so that the action of left and right translation of G itself, you know, extend to it. And some some I want this of five varieties, and this actually the algebraic more You know, when if, if M row is normal and contain is some con, some containing G with also the G time G, then it has a multiplication that's monoid. So the so we want M row to be a monoid. 
and you want also the space of function, the Schwab function, of all depending on this rule, on G of K, and what you want for the function they, that they somehow can relative to compact support. Okay. It's the right in the fact that this has a function on F star, but it's relatively compatible on F. Right? There's no relative infinity. And you want the basic function, you want basic function in this structure to satisfy these equalities, right? That you want that the trace on, on pi v and push by determinant of s, you want this determinant here for to, to write out this formula. Each of the L formula you want, and zero otherwise, if you pick up the, the right function and give the right the right scalar. And you want the Fourier transforms, right? So that the same that okay, if if f is a metric coefficient, if it is a position of pi, then we, when we convolve this kernel, pay rho is f, it had to give, give way to some gamma rho of f. Well, this, this requirement is very important, but it is kind of uh, difficult to check because it is kind of the egg and chicken, right? Uh, it, uh, you don't know gamma. But you want to define k rho so that that is satisfied with gamma. So you can define gamma by k or k by gamma. It depends. In many cases, you know gamma, so you want to define k. That you know that gives the right gamma in the case you know. But the, the but you want the definition of k to be general. So that is kind of, and then you need to compare possible summation to you know to 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 patch of this local story into a global story. So. I uh, actually, the, uh, you know, it made some fairly good progress on this, except the possible summation formula, then we have no clue uh, how to do this. Uh, but the rest of it, there's also some papers. Now, possible summation formula it seems to really depend on the, on the fact that the additive group, right? So this is, in this model, there's no more addition. So how can I do possible summation formula? So that is a big question. But uh, in some case, you know, it, it's not in the case mono case, but some other the case very good varieties. There is some 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 kind of very promising work of the of gets. You can put some very fun for some summation formula. So that is uh, maybe there's a chance that you can access the possible summation formula you know, away you know, beyond this realm of additive groups. I don't understand, so I'm not going to comment more on this, but I for me it's did very uh, a big mystery for me. But it had to be satisfied because we believe that possible the possible equation. So this parameter had to be satisfied. All right, so uh, let me uh, explain a little bit about this theory of adaptive monoid. Uh, so it, it is normal of algebraic varieties uh, with multiplication law and contain the adaptive group as open subset invertible element. And uh, it's again it's the same as some kind of extension of G. So you know, uh, it's a sub, some some boundaries, and so that G times G continue to happen. End. So this theory is somehow it's very nice theory, but it's very not not well known. And it's some uh, people. Uh, uh, so it captures on on G the torus. It's the toric varieties, as everybody know. So on the other hand, the reductive group. So it's kind of common generalization of, of this. And this is very rich and um, you know, combinatorial and very intricate. Uh, and it's abused by two men, by people like Pucha, Renner, and Binda. But they little know you know outside of, of, of these circles. So we start being more known now. And when we, we see the application to the number theory and maybe also in some geometries, but it has been a long while, it's very unknown theory, part of mathematics. So, and uh, by, you know, Renner gives some kind of very nice way to, to construct, you know, monoid. In general, it's very complicated. It can be quite degenerate, not very kind of ugly. But for reductive monoid, so when, uh, when the, you know, invertible element form reductible, they're actually very nice. So, for example, you can see this and this, look at maximum tolerance of G, and just take the Kazarisky closure in the monoid. Right? And because uh, you have W optional T, because G times G, if, you know, extend after M, we have that new up, the vibe will continue on up with the variety. So what you have is the toric variety, which is W equivalent to the variety. And what Renner says is kind of equivalent. 
So if you have a total W equivalent to equal range, then you can touch up your data. So, uh, so, 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 by so, you know, the technically you can chop it up typically, you can just need uh, a W equivalent strongly convex rational cones in the space of Kukar of the T. But if this kind of strongly convex rational cone is a uh, five to the right is, and then you need this cone to be even adapted. So this is to be simple, but actually to, you know, to, to understand what kind of code you get is 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 kind of headache. Mm -hmm. uh, but but the thing is that if you have many of these cones very naturally formed when you have a ripple of dual groups. So when you have ripple of dual groups, so why don't you just look at the most simple data that can be associated to this because the y characters that mean that you restrict it to, to the maximum torus the head of GM and look at the weight. So for every weight lambda, you can have multiplicity m lambda, you know? and this is this this is kind of another way to write the the, the y character formula, right? Uh, and now we have the set, the multi set, the set with multiplicity, and this is obviously W equivalent. And also under this condition with the GM acting by uh, by by scalar, it is strongly convex, but it's going to one direction, and that is the. That give you the that give you this this toric varieties and also the reactive But you see that is this also the so far with this very simple construction. But um, we see that we have discarded too much information, right? We have representation, we have multiple, but you remove all the multiplicity, you just keep the set, and the set gives you some kind of varieties. But there's something more. There's something more than this model that needs to be constructed. Something like a stack or something like that. But I, I'm not, I, I don't, um, you know, I know that something should exist, but I, I don't have a clear idea how to do it. So, also, one, one of the things that is always singular, except in this principle thing where it's just the space of matrix, right? So, so although this is kind of very, it's still kind of poor, and it, it, some kind of the you know, this kind of poor copy of something richer that should exist. But in many cases, that kept on the capture some information that we want. For example, when rho is irreducible, uh, then that gives us actually uh, the, the basic function. But when, so when this is a five parameter varieties, and you can uh, form the R space. So when for any other variety, R space to the space of of a point with value in the formal series, so with infinite dimension variety. Uh, so, although we do not know, uh, we would like to, but uh, it is not, uh, not it doesn't have some kind of theoretical um, stumble. Uh, you don't know how to define the perversion of this, of this thing. We want, we want that many from E is a perversion, some kind of perversion. We should not know how to define perversion. So as some kind of the way to, to go around this problem, I could define the IC function of whatever the procedure should be. I don't know how to do it, but you can define the IC, but the trace of function for many things. You can define that. You know? So that just kind of say that it could be a, it should be a good track, right? But what do you really want to dispose of it that I don't know how to define? But the, the, the function, the four bit chain is well defined. And uh, the, the third theorem that of Boutier, Sakanaudis, and myself, we prove that when Roy is reducible, and with other assumptions, we, as I said before, then the IC function is exactly the basic function that we are, we are looking for. So this, so this side of the model is a pretty good, right, in this case. But, you know, that that is slightly mis misleading. It's not that, you know, that it just captures a, a very small piece of information. So, for example, you want that the, somehow the, uh, the the short space to be um, to be somehow the other perverse shift on this R space, but we don't want to define perverse shift that it, it can get the trouble to that. But anyway, the, the short space should, should be depend very much on the singularity of this R space. That is the, the intuitions. So we still have a lot of work to do on this understanding singularity of this R space based on this basic result that we got. Um, a couple of years ago. 
So we, that's what I expected. They said that singularity in this art space maybe is complemented by this kind of object that I do not notify. Should, should give you a kind of right definition holds by pro function. So somehow this can be very strange, you know, but at the beginning, when I started working on this project, maybe more than 10 years ago, I think that this would be the, the easiest thing to do, defend this first day. But now it's probably the most difficult thing to do. There's no reason on this so far. So what is seem to be more difficult thing, but the way how to have more reason is defined with this full kernel, right? And how can you find this full kernel? We have very little information about it. You want that it act on, it had to be some kind of central function. So then it after represented by a scalar, and the scalar is this kind of hypothetical gamma factors that we know in some case, do not know in any other case. So how can you define it, this invariant function? Well, I mean, at least if you had, uh, in the case of toric case, uh, then you have a definition. Uh, you, you can use this thing to define this. Now you didn't want the, the multi set, right? Not just the set, but the multi set. The multi set, every, every time you have, uh, you have a core characters, lambda, so lambda is character T hat, that is a core character T. So we have a method from GM to T, right? So when put them all together and multiply them, you have this method row hat from GM to the N to T. And N is a dimension of representation dual group. Yeah. And the, also the this um, the direction, the privileged direction that that, that happens to actually can extend to many toric varieties from a n most many toric variety to this empty row that we identify by the code, and um, and also uh, this is w equivalent. So again, here you do something very naive. Well, you know, usually how there's no way to seem to have no way to map the viable to the symmetric groups, right? When you have representation. But there are one. If you try to ignore it, whatever you know on this theory, you know, it's just doing something naively, just have this multi set and uh, and you actually have kind of reproduction map from, from the Y group to GML, to, to the virtual SNF, to symmetric group, and that give right to this W environment theoretic portion. And so uh, on this, of course, that is a kind of the very exponential function, which is X1 plus X2 plus X10 to exponential. And that is what you want. And in the cryptoric varieties, that is clear that you want to do is the, uh, to, to push forward this function uh, along this map, right? So we have this map. And here we have function, and the, the, the fibers are mostly ways is, is like the, the the you know like u the kernel of the of homomorphism, and to integrate over u that give you, you know, the text of regularization that you can define some function in this and that is exactly the function you want on the case of torus. So there's no doubt that it's the right construction of the torus case. So now one of the naive cases, because you can divide by W, you know, and then this T mod 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 W is exactly the space of same of conjugacy class on G. And what you want is uh, the function on that. So why you don't check this at the, at the kernel? Just right. use the W equivalent to take this definition. So it works for toric varieties. It works for the good non because we're going to the explanation, the choice is exactly this. So, so at the beginning, so okay, I got my definition because it have, have two cases, but it, it failed on the next case. It doesn't work for the next case. This is kind of too naive to be true. So, what is not very not true is the, another property of this kernel had to satisfy the representation theory requirement that it had to be compatible with constant terms. The part of it is set. Well, this work on Jacques is kind of representation part, and this one doesn't satisfy that. Right. So then, and you know, it's really kind of despair for a while, but then uh, um, these are problems. This kind of best function is not the right function, but then, uh, it, you know, Lafort, Laurent Lafort has been working on this problem in kind of an independent way for many years, and he wrote a hundred of pages of this, ready for jury. But you know, if you take the time to read this, a kind of germ in this. A, for example, in the case of uh, he also realized that this method from the, he doesn't he work for GN2. He doesn't work for GN. 
he said it doesesn't for GM2. But he proposed a recipe to correct it. So that is what uh, Lafon, to explain what Lafon does. Uh, okay, I just do the others. So the so recently with the, with the, uh, uh, with Luo, I, uh, we were able to generalize the Lafon recipe to GM. So what? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm go out of time. I just give you the but It's kind of quite amazing formula. So this you had to start from J roll and you need to apply some kind of pseudo different operator to this to get your right code. So, okay, this, uh, so this is a formula. Okay. So this you look very strange from you know if you are from from leaf theory, right? But that's what it needs to be to be the, the good thing. So you have a function j rho which depends on, on a1, a2, 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 which is a cofield count that's equal to some function. You want to invent from. And the first thing you do is do the full H transform of this. So that operation is not, not, not what you do in the leaf theory. So, so, so we do the full H transform, the sun now we from kind of zero head, which is now the function of the dual variables. And then the what I call pseudo digital operators, we we do the full transform back, but before that we multiply by some function. Okay, this <coughs> absolute value of polynomial function. And in the case of GN2, this is just the Lafort, which is A1. So what Lafort does in the case of GN2, so just A1 and A2, which is multiplied by absolute value of A1. Right? And we're trying to understand what he does here, then what 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 is the meaning in general? And you found we had to, to find this kind of symmetric polynomials. And this symmetric polynomial, I just give you the formula, it's kind of amazing. So this is the formula for this. I cannot say that I just, you know, can explain it, but it's look very really pretty. You look at the you know, symmetric polynomial, look at the, the you can see as a you know, function of diagonal matrix. And then this is the thing. You look at the same kind of function, so alpha i, again, the trace. But for GNN, GNN minus two, somehow it's very strange. And they multiply one of them together. And that is your, that is the, the pseudo differential point that you need. And you have to prove that this, when you do this, you get something that is, um, that works in the next case where our perfect construction of the that symmetric square for, for GN2. And also it's compatible in general with the, with the power of this set. So now I believe <laughs> that should be the right formula, but no, but the confidence is just supplied by this, you know, one more example. All right, thank you. One question. I have a question. Um, the um, representation, the automorphic representation of G hat. If you think of G hat as the Tanaka group yes. of perverse sheaves right, yes. on the on, on the Nasmanian. Yes. So can you formulate a functional equation in terms of perverse sheaves in a way that is uh, geometrical? Mm. I think not really, I mean, not so far because the, the formal equation had to do with some million transforms, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not clear what the million transform do is perfect. I mean, there's some work by, by Loza and Gabbers on, on the million transform for toric case, but it's just very simple. And, and as far as it goes, the geometric level entry, we do not know how to formulate this. But, you know, in many cases, you know, there's, Geometry elements is they do some beautiful conjectures, but there are not so many proofs so far. I right? need just a few very few cases. But one of the main, you know, big theorem was due to the this yes ago, so 10 years, 15 years back, where he actually proved this for GMN, or the following things. And that 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 proof is also combined to some L functions. So some kind of vanishing some L functions. But on those, that, that is, I think that the L function is not present. Doesn't have it new present the geometric lambdas, but the proof when you some kind of proof you want to prove you need L function. But to answer your question, I I don't 
I don't know any kind of you know, perverse or geometric interpretation that answers the question. This is monoids that you were considering. They, in all cases, there are spherical varieties. Yes, of course. Yes. So there is a, a dual group attached to, to them, right? Yes, yes. What is the role of this dual group? I think in this case, it's the same as you had. In this, in this case, the same as it is in this not. Oh, because similar. this is a completion of the, uh, of the, G, of the G itself. Yes, yes. Yes. So in this case, it's the same. Right. So by the way, on this node, No. Well, I present some some kind of, of Hamoid analysis framework where you have this short function, they have Fourier transform, you can try. Um, so that is very specific to the question function equation, but there is a very very um, in the parallel framework for functionalities, and then many work done by by Yanis Akilakidis. In, in terms of spherical varieties in one mm -hmm. different short space, and instead of fully transform, you want to define some good functoriality transform and you know, good, good functorities and one to the So it's completely parallels. And in that case, also then the question of, of the dual group of spherical varieties is very important. So uh -huh. how to but I yeah I so you can have kind of, these functional equations also in that uh, more general context of spherical varieties. Uh, not directly, but it's more like they have trace formula. It's kind of quite, quite a trace formula. But the you know the, the the two different approach can be formulated in a in a, in a strikingly similar way. Okay. So if there are no other questions, comments, we thank Professor Gonzalez.